Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. This program on KSJE is supported by Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation, providing a competent, innovative, and caring team of professionals to serve wealth management, trust administration, employee benefit plans, retirement planning, and estate settlement needs. Find out more about Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation at 505-599-0181. Well, let me turn to my guests who are here with us this morning on the program to talk a little bit about education. Once again, Dr. Eugene Schmidt is here, superintendent of schools from the Farmington Municipal School District. Dr. Schmidt, good morning. Scott, good morning. And, and I'd like, with your permission, yes, to rename your show for the morning. I know that you're the cultural beacon of the Four Corners, but in a few minutes, I'd like to introduce the multicultural corner Uh beacon of the four corners and so i'd like to kind of flip the name of your show a little bit the viewers and listeners will understand in a few minutes i think that makes a lot of sense dr schmidt so thank you for that and welcome it's good to have you here of course our other guests who are here to talk a little bit about multiculturalism as well um karen garcia brown is here she is the director of multicultural services for the farmington school district good morning good morning thank you for being here thank you good to have you with us and of course also with you is and with us this morning dr shawl iron moccasin is here as well Good morning to you, Assistant Director of Indian Education for Farmington Schools. And great to have you all with us. And uh, with that being said, Dr. Schmidt, let me turn back to you a little bit about um, the multicultural reasons that we're here this morning. Yes, and I thank you for that. Um, The community would understand that over 6,400 of our 12,000 students are Native American, and something close to 4,000 of our students are Hispanic or Latino. And so it would seem appropriate to have these two ladies talk about the work that they're doing as the leaders of their departments. And what we're going to discover today, Scott, is they're doing some amazing work. And not only have these ladies helped raise the graduation rates of our demographical groups, we're going to discover that they are award winners as people and their departments. And I just wanted to give them a chance to showcase what they're doing and have our community applaud the work that these people are doing on behalf of children throughout our district. So Very good. All right. Well, we'll start with uh, Karen Garcia-Brown and uh, a little bit about your job as director of uh, multicultural education for Farmington Municipal Schools. So talk to me a little bit about what that in- entails. Well, thank you for having me. You bet. And um, my job is to oversee the language and culture department for Farmington Municipal Schools as multicultural director. And basically, I oversee the work of ensuring that our bilingual students and our English language student, our students of a second language receive an equitable education in Farmington School District. Mm-hmm. At this time, we have um, 1,447 bilingual students in our program and 1,307 English learners in Farmington Schools. And... Um, We have um, 45 students at the high school level who have earned the bilingual uh, biliteracy seal, and that seal will have them um, have that seal on their diploma as well as on their transcripts. I see, and And that means what for for those students? So what that means is that they have proven that they are bilingual and biliterate in a language other than English, and that will open doors for them in the working world, as well as in for colleges. Okay. And so when you speak a language other than English, that is... Um, that that really is a milestone for them. Sure. And so they receive that seal in Spanish or French. 
And also we have uh, two that are in Navajo, and, and Dr. Iron Moccasin will speak to that as okay. well. Okay, very good. Um, we have English language uh, development programs in our school district, and those programs and services mean that we have an English language facilitator that supports our teachers with professional development and instructional materials. And um, she provides a lot of support for our teachers. We also have a specific English language development course in each of our schools to help raise the English language proficiency for our students. At this time, we have 15 different languages in Farmington Municipal Schools. 15? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, we have not just Spanish and Native American languages. Mm -hmm. We have Vietnamese, Cantonese, Russian, Portuguese. Um, we have a, multi you know, a multiple uh, amount of languages. Right. And you have to be able to teach children to the, who speak those languages. We have, to, we have to be able to help those children receive an equitable language, an, an equ equitable um, education. I see. Um, no matter what language they speak when they, when the they present to you, I suppose, speak. right? Or Absolutely. to the district. Gotcha. Absolutely, yes. And I think people will be surprised that there are so many different languages in, in Farmington. Certainly we understand maybe Navajo and Spanish, mm -hmm. but the others are maybe a bit surprising to folks. Absolutely. And those children are deserving um, of, a lang of, a, of an education um, equal to those English, to their English speaking peers. Right. And so we provide the services for them. That's your job. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Dr. Schmidt talked a little bit about awards that, uh, that you have won. Can I ask you a bit about those? So, uh, uh, yes. I just received notice last week that, um, I have been awarded the state, um, Bilingual Administrators Award, and so Congratulations. it's quite an honor, and I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> but, but Modest may be the better <laughs> word to use. How's that? <laughs> But congratulations. Thank you. I'm sure it's well-deserved. I'm sure Dr. Schmidt would say it's well-deserved. Yeah, let me, let me have, <laughs> uh, offer several thoughts, and certainly we're very proud of the work that Ms. Garcia-Brown does on behalf of our schools. Uh, in her humbleness, she hasn't shared that she and Dr. Ann Moccasin conspired to set up dual-language kindergarten programs at both Apache and perhaps Dr. Ann Moccasin can talk about that, but McCormick Elementary is a school that has a dual language Spanish speaking kindergarten program. And these things were introduced and brought to the district by these ladies. And so when we celebrate being the administrator of the year for uh, Ms. Garcia Brown, certainly we are appreciative of not only has she brought language and indigenous language back into the school system, there's also training for parents at night because I believe that there's a community parent language night. You know, we just don't want to teach the kids. We want to teach the parents the language as well. So really did some nice work and very proud to have her leading our multicultural division. So thank right. you, Karen, thank for you. that. Well, thank you. congratulations <laughs> thank again. You. And, uh, and what that means for students and for parents is that some of these things are offered to their students to hopefully, again, get them... Um, learning at proficiency levels like their English language um, counterparts, I suppose, or in yes. peers, right? Yes. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Very good. What about some of the other things that your department does? Um, we have, um, as Dr. Schmidt said, we offer parent language courses, both in Spanish and in Navajo. And next year we'll be um, offering English language courses for our non-English speaking parents. Okay. And so we're opening that up. We are also going to provide a service at central office for our non-English speaking parents for, to help them with registration, district policies, um, to ensure that they understand everything that we offer for Farmington schools. If they don't understand the English language, we want to ensure that they um, have that opportunity. Um, to know what's going on. Right. And so we're going to have that service for them as well. Right. I imagine they're all free. 
these Absolutely. services? Absolutely. Absolutely. That you're offering? Absolutely. Right. So one more, mm-hmm. Scott. I'll be signing again on yes. behalf of these ladies, and then we'll quickly jump to uh, some thoughts from Dr. Aramakasin. But when you go to the district's website, you can click a button that will flip it into Spanish and other languages sure. as well. So the district is trying to do an outreach to all of our families through uh, visual communication as well. So again, thank you, uh, Ms. Garcia-Brown, for the work that you're doing leading multicultural. Very good. That's true. Okay. And um, and something going on at McCormick Elementary School. Dr. Schmidt, I think, mentioned that, but another award for uh, a program over there at yes. McCormick? Yes. Well, as Dr. Schmidt mentioned, we um, opened a dual language program in Spanish for kindergarten and first grade. And we have a program to support um, those uh, that school. It's called Imagine Learning. And so they're... Uh, dual language program uses that um, that support and because of their exemplary usage and implementation with language and literacy and with the Espanol piece they have been awarded their um, Lang- Imagine Learning Beacon Award and um, for the state and so I was notified yesterday that Imagine Learning Company is going to provide them a banner and come down and award McCormick with that Beacon Award for their outstanding um, use of Imagine Learning and implementation in our dual language program. Nice. Again, congratulations. And, and it goes down to, again, I imagine the teachers who are the teachers and in the those schools. Yes. And um, I have to say that this work is not possible without the principals and the teachers and their hard work and dedication to our students. Very good. And Dr. Schmidt, again, that's all yeah, part uh, of the uh, the goal, I guess, to help these kids, so these students learn and achieve and, mm-hmm. and, and be good uh, good learners like their counterparts, like their peers. Yeah, several things in our what we call our five pillars of success, certainly the academic achievement, but also the engagement of families and community into the school. And so there are really some nice things being done. So I was going to tease you one more time and say, now you have to deal with two beacons in our community. That's right, and they're beacon. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's very true. But uh, we're okay with that. We will share the term gladly when it's for something like this. So that's wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And congratulations for the work that is being done in Farmington schools and on all the uh, accolades and attention that is being given and and recognized from around the state. That's got to be nice that the, the state recognizes that, that what you're doing. So very good. I'm Scott Bicklin, my guest this morning from Farmington Municipal Schools, and we are talking about education in Farmington Schools this morning. And Dr. Shaw Iron Moccasin is also here with us, and she is the Assistant Director of Indian Education for Farmington Schools. And again, thank you for coming in, Dr. Iron Moccasin. Thank you for having me. Uh, you bet. And talk to me a little bit about the work that uh, that you do in your program um, with schools throughout the district, correct? It's not just at the high schools, is it? Absolutely. Right. And so um, when we talk about Indian education, what types of things? We know we have a lot of Native American students, of course, and so it's very important to meet their needs as well. Correct. So, um, Ms. Brown and I work in the same department. Um, I oversee the Indian education component of multicultural services. And primarily, um, I we have a program that we uh, have developed core values, and our program is based on those core values. Um, Okay. Everything we do, uh, and by we, I'm talking about the youth advisors. I have um, a Native American youth advisor at each of the secondary schools. Right. Who is in charge of working uh, particularly with our students who are struggling with um, attendance, with um, academics, and they provide that cultural mentoring, the um, assistance to um, help them land on their feet using the core va- values that our, our program is um, based on. I see. And those core values would be things like, like what, for example? So um, they are uh, core values very um, central to our culture. Right. Um, the first one is ego, which is having an innate perseverance to um, be successful. Um, and the second one is ke, which is basically relationships, um, kinship. Right, um, right. The third one is Ajobat, which is having compassion uh, for uh, others around you. And then Hojo is the next one, which means to do things with care, with caution. 
And the last one is Nikizad Ille, which means our language is valuable. I see. So the youth advisors use these core values anytime they work with students to um, help them um, focus on their culture and their identity. Uh-huh. Um, so we are um, in our second, no, actually, I'm sorry, our first year with um, youth advisors at all secondary schools. Prior to this year, we only had them at the high schools. I see. And then does that translate, too, into their academic um, achievements and things like that in, in the classroom by going back to those core values? Right. So what we're trying to do is um, help students appreciate who they are as Native people and use that as a foundation to um, see themselves as successful people. Um, so the youth advisors will work with a group of 20 at a time and they are getting, uh, the data shows that they are getting uh, these, the students that they're working with either to come to school regularly, which then impacts their academics, it improves their grade, and then they also keep data on students who are improving a letter grade in math and English uh, language arts. I see. Um, we are seeing some progress. But again, this is our first year in working together as a team. Right. But it's something that you're, you're watching, I guess, and, and measuring or trying to, to grade how well it's, it's going yes. in, this first, in this first year. Right. As you mentioned. And Dr. Schmidt, is this something that, uh, again, it wouldn't be possible without the support of the principals and the schools and things like that to, uh, to help make this happen? There really are a lot of nice stories below this story when Dr. Aaron Moccasin talks about the value of her native youth advisors at every secondary school. That creates a caring adult for every native child. And so these people will call the home, say, how are you doing? We need to get to school. How are you doing on your homework? Are you staying up? We're trying to build an environment where kids don't fall behind. And if they do fall behind, we catch them right away. We don't want our kids to fail. And so one of the things we'll be talking about in perhaps the second segment is graduation rates. And so under the leadership of these ladies, we are seeing the graduation rates of Hispanic students, Native American students, be among the best in the state. And, and we know that we can be even better, but building relationships through these connections to kids, I, I think is gonna have a dramatic impact over the next few years. And so we appreciate the ideas that these ladies are bringing into the school system, again, to connect, build that, that safe zone for kids. Right, and it's another example of how these programs help with the ultimate goal of getting these kids to stay in school and to do well in their classes and, and go on to whatever it is they want to do once they complete uh, high school. Yes. And so there's another award for you mm. and your program, is there not, uh, Dr. Iron Moccasin, that uh, we can talk about this morning? So, um we have uh, an evaluator that comes in twice a year, one in, once in the fall and then once in the um, spring. Mm -hmm. um, he was very impressed with, um, he'll visit with me and then he'll go to the schools and visit with the youth advisors and they will show how they're keeping data and how they're working with students. He was very impressed with the program um, that he nominated us for the um, uh, exemplary program for the Southwest region uh, at the National Johnson O'Malley Conference. Wow. And so my team was able to pick up that award. Congratulations. And again, exemplary is a pretty good uh, word to use, I would think. So. And it being really our first year with a team, a right. team, I thought that was pretty good. And this is up against other uh, other, other programs in other school districts around the Across country, the nation. I would think, right, Dr. Schmidt? And let me go and talk about the future for these two ladies, because for the last several years, we've been watching with interest the Yazzie and Martinez lawsuits against the state of New Mexico for adequately funding or sufficiently funding public education. The That court case has been settled, and a direct result of that is millions of new dollars that go to what we call at-risk students. And so many of the students that these ladies 
are trying to connect with are part of that at-risk population. So over the next year, again, we'll be adding in another $2 million into programs as an example, uh, the budget committee meeting, we'll talk about that in a short while, but we're looking to add somewhere between 15 and 20 more teachers into the educational system in the hopes of reducing class size. And again, reduce class size, more individual contact with kids, better success academically. Uh, kids feel like they're building relationships. And so these ladies will be guiding us in the work that we do with at-risk kids over these next years with these new dollars. Millions of dollars, Scott. Right, and that was uh, <clears throat> as a result of the legislative session and, and as a result of this lawsuit, as you mentioned, that was their attempts to resolve it, right? Yes, to- yeah. The, once once that court case was settled, the, the judge gave the state legislature till April 15th, which was their last day, right. to uh, figure it out. To figure out how to invest more money in uh, at risk students. Sure. And so, Dr. Iron I imagine this is exciting because uh, many times maybe you're asked to do something and there's not always a lot of money there to, to use. And so, with the state now maybe putting a, a focus on this issue, is that something that can be helpful um, when it comes down to your program and, and others across the state I, and to how well your students are doing? I think it'll um, benefit our entire department both of you we do sure. share a lot of students um, we we have uh, students who are uh, bilingual in our bilingual programs as well as um, English uh, language development uh, classrooms so I think working we do work really work well together Right. So um, I think it'll benefit a lot of our students. Sure. Let me bring uh, Ms. Garcia-Brown back into the conversation a little bit about some of this extra focus that uh, your programs are getting because of this lawsuit, because of what the state legislature decided to do in, during, during their session. Good news for programs like yours around the state and in Farmington? Um, at this time, I think that we're waiting to see... Um, what the specific goals of the lawsuit will be. And as soon as we find out, then we are um, going, you know, we're definitely looking forward to see how we can go further to strengthen the current programs that we have. Sure. And then um, we'll, we'll move forward from there. We have some very strong things in place right now in Farmington and um, definitely anytime you get additional funding that's that's a good thing right and which i guess um, you could use for more staff or try to get the classes smaller or things like that those are what i'm talking about right and so as soon as the specific goals are determined um, with this lawsuit then we'll know which direction that we can take and um, that's where we're at right now with the uh, with the state at the state level. Right. And so um, we definitely will put any additional funding to to good use, um, and put them right right in the classrooms where our teachers need need them and and for our children. Very good. Well, congratulations Thank again, you. and uh, Dr. Iron Moxon, back to you uh, a little bit about. Some of your students getting uh, some recognition as well um, when they uh, when they graduate soon. So two of our students, one at Farmington High and one at uh, Piedra Vista, uh, that were able to obtain the um, bilingual biliteracy seal in Navajo. Okay. Um, which means they're fluent speakers. They are. Um, it'll appear on their graduation, just like Miss Brown mentioned. Right. So. With our um, many of our students um, not having the language, it's wonderful to see two of our students um, obtain this award. Right, and this is specifically for being able to speak the Navajo language. Yes, correct. Right. Yes. And I know a lot of folks are concerned about the native languages across the across the world. Really, mm-hmm. that we're losing some of those, and there's been an increased effort, I think, uh, locally in the last maybe decade or a little bit over tw- ten years, maybe to. to teach the Navajo language and to, again, a lot of folks turning back to the Navajo language to mm-hmm. keep it alive and, and learn it and share it and those types of things? Correct. So um, the dual language program at Apache is uh, a Navajo we, uh, dual language program. We are uh, moving our kinders, our first set of kinders, um, into first grade. 
And so we are currently looking for um, a dual language teacher for our incoming kinder. Um, Miss Williams, who currently teaches the um, dual language Navajo, is moving up with her first graders um, in, in the coming school year. Okay. So um, that's a plug for a Navajo language teacher, if there's one listening out there. Job opening, <laughs> right, right. Help wanted. Um, okay. And then we also offer uh, for our parents a uh, free uh, Navajo language class on Mondays this year. Last year, I believe it was on Tuesdays, um, completely free. And they, they work with our Navajo language facilitator who teaches those classes. So we are uh, putting um, opportunities out because our parents are interested in relearning the language. Sure. Um, so we have those opportunities for parents um, to attend those classes. Interesting. I imagine you find a lot of families maybe whose, whose children are learning Navajo, but the, maybe the parents, even maybe the grandparents, that kind of a lost generation who did not get the opportunity to learn their language. The, yes, absolutely. So what a great opportunity for them to take advantage of that. So yes. great. Well, thank you both for coming in, both of you, to talk a little bit about the work that you do at, uh, at Farmington Schools. It's fascinating and very important work, as we've heard. So thank, thank you, you both very us. much. You're welcome. Dr. Schmidt, let me turn back to you a little bit, because I know there are a few topics that you would like to touch on this morning while you are here, and uh, we can talk a little bit about some of the things. Uh, budget committee, um, always uh, something this time of year you have to talk about, correct? Because uh, now you know how much money the state is going to, going to give you, and this year it's better than uh, it has been. Yes, and let me jump back. Before okay. we get into the budget, I want to talk very briefly about a goal that I can offer to these ladies and the work that they do, and that's to, we have an opportunity through a group called New Mexico Rising to recruit future teachers out of our high school ranks. And this is, it's important that our listeners know that San Juan College is a great partner in trying to move future teachers into the mainstream. As an example, uh, the college has an early childhood education program. I know that a number of seniors this year are taking dual credit courses that would lead them to the possibility of becoming future teachers. And so as we look forward to next year and the years beyond, one of the things that we'll be hoping for is that we can engage more high school students in the thought of becoming an educator of the future through New Mexico Rising. So all you high school kids out there start thinking about teaching is a wonderful career. And it would be my hope that some year that our teaching population would look like us as a community. And so we would like to figure out more ways to engage. And so when Dr. Armacuson talks about Native Youth Advisors, Perhaps there's an opportunity through that group to begin instilling the thought that public education or a teaching career would be a fascinating opportunity for the future. Right. I would, I would think so. And I know uh, a lot of people in uh, the teaching profession are very passionate about it. They, they wouldn't do anything else despite all of the other challenges and ups and downs and things that we hear about. So I think it's a great thing for folks to consider. And a so, lot more um, attention is being given to the profession of teaching, I think, these days. Yes, and so let me go back to the thoughts that I was hoping to share. The school is actively engaged in building our budget for the next school year. Right. We have a budget committee that will be meeting this afternoon, and we're nearing the conclusions. But the good news is this is a budget year we can talk about adding money into the budget. It seemed like Scott the last three years, you and I are talking about how we're taking money out of the budget, reducing the number of teachers. So we're very excited to share with your listening audience that we will be putting teachers back into the classroom. Um, for Farmington, it's something in the neighborhood of 9.2, maybe as much as $9.4 million more than last year. So I want to thank all those oil and gas people out there because right. it's, really it, it's, it's a revenue year for New Mexico. And much because of that industry is what you're talking and about. Much so, because yes. yes, and so I want to thank all those gas and oil people out there. And the teachers that have that are being added to the classrooms and they're still in the classrooms are going to be making more money in the new year too. That's also part of this budget. Yeah, that's the exciting news for the teachers. Is immediate. There's an infusion of new staff salary dollars. 
Congress, a, a part of the legislation passed will raise the beginning, what we call level one, teacher pay to 41000 and that's up from 36 and so that's a 9% salary increase thanks to revenues generated by our extraction industries. Middle level two teachers, 50000 level 360. If teachers are already in those levels, because sometimes through experience or credits, they will get a 6%, and so we're raising the level it has been that chant that Farmington has had for years, first to 40, right. and, and the state legislature has responded. What that does for us, Scott, is it makes our salaries comparable to Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. So we, as a Four Corners interest, we will have a chance to recruit more actively in that little Four Corners region for teachers that would benefit our kids and so increased salaries and two other very specific things that i'd like to share is is one is called k5 reading plus right and this is a opportunity for the state it's a grant application process where two of our schools apache elementary and esperanza have applied for funding to pilot an additional 25 days to the school year And so we'll be looking to recruit teachers from Apache and Esperanza, upwards of 100 kids or more from each of those schools, to start school in July. Uh Ah, okay. That's new. That's going to be new. And and we will watch those 100 kids or more to see how much either – loss of learning will they avoid or new learning will they have before their peers show up in August. And so that will be a curiosity. It may be, Scott, in five years we're talking about all 10 elementaries are going school year-round. Right. So this is the start of an experiment or a pilot to see what happens. Okay, very interesting. And then uh, testing, of course, you talk, you call it Park Light. Yes. Is is underway. This is, but it's a new um, um, state-built assessment yes when the new governor and her secretary of education came into office one of their campaign promises that they would begin to look for ways to reduce the time of the test and uh, perhaps what the purpose of the test is used for uh, the new park light the kids actually took the math portion grades three through uh, 11 yesterday they're taking ela probably today and tomorrow and so make sure your kids are fed before they come to school and ready to learn. But, but the park light is a shorter test that the state tells us they will give us the re, re, uh, responses, the, the information from those by the end of May so we can begin planning for next year. Park tests in the past oftentimes weren't shared until October or November, which didn't give us a summer to prepare what the new learning might look like. So um, for the listening audience, this is uh, this is breaking news, if you will. Uh, the park light will have a new name uh-huh. next year. Okay. And so start thinking about TAMELA, T-A-M-E-L-A, TAMELA. But uh-huh. it is the transition assessment uh, for math and uh, English language arts. And so TAMELA will be the, the new park as we move into the future. And And the state actually has a committee of 40 people studying what will the assessments of the future look like. And we are pleased to share that one of our people, Nate Parentoni, is part of that group of 40 that will help guide the thought process for the new state assessment. But be watching for that. There there will always be an assessment. Federal law dictates that. What it looks like is, is a state decision we get to make. And that's what we're talking about. So very good. We are just have almost out of time, Dr. Schmidt, and you brought a magazine article with you that yes. I want to ask you about because I think it has some nice uh, accolades for the new um, Farmington High School. The, the magazine, I'll hold it up here for everyone, is called Learning by Design, and uh, in it is a nice uh, article. And tell us a little bit about uh, what it's talking about here for Farmington High School. Everyone. Yes, we're very pleased to share that when we build schools, we build schools of high quality. And Farmington High has won a number of design and construction awards. When you, when you make a national magazine, it's, it's a big deal. And so we're very proud of the architect FBT, the construct, the builder, Jane's Corporation. But we're also very proud of the fact that those Farmington High kids, 1,500 kids, 
ran around campus over 40 portables during that construction time, maintaining a high quality of learning and, uh, you know, just a credit to the administration and the teachers that, that while this building is going on around them, we're building a design that, that qualifies for a national magazine. Well, congratulations, and it seems to be holding up well, and I know folks seem to be, and teachers, thrilled to be in that new space. So uh, congratulations again on uh, the new Farmington High School. So we are out of time, everybody, I'm sorry to say, but thank you all for coming in this morning and talking about the work that you all do for students in Farmington schools. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. This program on KSJE is supported by Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation, providing a competent, innovative, and caring team of professionals to serve wealth management, trust administration, employee benefit plans, retirement planning, and estate settlement needs. Find out more about Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation at 505-599-0181. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, your community hospital with a rich heritage that dates back to before New Mexico was a state. We've been improving the health of the Four Corners since 1910. As a nonprofit hospital, San Juan Regional Medical Center is a values-driven organization. We strive to deliver on our mission to personalize health care and create vitality and enthusiasm in healing. We are here for you when you need us, offering a comprehensive range of inpatient, outpatient, and emergency care services. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.